Hey guys, welcome back to Vince Bell Customs. Today we're going to go over something a little bit simple that pretty much anybody can do with a pre-painted statue they have in their collection. Uh, say you get a statue, it's a solid color, it's very flat, but you kind of want to make a pop a little bit, but you don't want to, you know, mask off the whole statue and paint it and go crazy. You just kind of want to make that little area pop. So I'm going to go over interference colors. Now these are from uh, Liquid Tex. Uh, the one on the left is a blue, the one on the right is a red. Uh, it, it looks like it's, you know... A white pigment paint but it's got like interference colors in it's almost like a seashell type looking color but they're very thick in these bottles so it won't actually go through your airbrush unless you thin them down but what I like to do is I just have a little glass bottle which you can see to the left uh, I put a couple uh, you know a little bit of drops here and there of the paint and some water mix it up very well and then it goes through the airbrush pretty good so basically uh, the goal is you want to take a statue and you want to take a specific area on that statue and make it pop. Now, maybe it's a solid color blue, maybe it's a flat color black, uh, you know, it could be any kind of flat color from your factory, and you just want to make it pop a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you these two statues, how we could take one of them uh, from the factory, paint up some interference color on it, and you can see it side by side, which you might like and which you might not like. So basically I have these two uh, Sideshow spider Woman statues that I was uh, going to start working on before I broke my thumb. So it's kind of been in limbo. Uh, the one on the left is broken and the other one is uh, damaged too, but, but I have to strip them down. So before I strip them down, I want to show you what you can actually do to make them pop. So the one on the left is broken uh, hand, so we're going to use that one as the experiment. So I'm going to take an interference red, which is on the right. I want to mix it into here and then I'm just going to, you know... Do a misting of the paint on the red area just to give you an idea of what it would look like. And then we can show side by side and you can see how just a little bit of interference color could kind of make that red pop a little bit more from the other uh, flat red from the factory. Uh, it might not be a huge difference in the camera. We're going to try to see if we can show it. But in person you could definitely see the difference. So basically if you just like the outfit you like the way the factory is but you want that red to pop a little bit more so you could grab some silly putty and you can mask off here here all over and you could just kind of mist over the red seal it take off and then you're done so it's pretty much simple that anyone can do uh it can help you uh start you know getting into airbrushing you know experimenting with some uh pre-painted statues where you're not comfortable with you know stripping the whole statue painting from scratch you just kind of want to make the factory paints pop a little bit more so I'm going to kind of show you what to do uh, I'm not going to actually uh, mask off the yellow areas because I just can't uh, my thumb is still broken so I can't get in there and really mask it all off so I'm just going to kind of you know paint up the leg areas a little bit and then uh, so this way we can see it side by side so I'll show you how I mix up the paint we'll come back we'll do the airbrushing and then you can just see how it all works out all right, so basically all we're going to do is we're going to take some interference red, uh, kind of squirt it in there a little bit. Really don't need a lot. Uh, basically, that's good enough. So as you can see, it's pretty thick. It really doesn't go much. So I just take some water, get it in there, and then what I just do is I just take this and shaking it all up. You got to kind of get it watery in a way. Uh, look in there, it's kind of pretty watery, looking good. It's going to go through the airbrush pretty well. You can kind of start to see like the interference red up on there hitting the light area. And that's kind of what's going to be tinted. If you don't get it really watery, uh, you can kind of look on the finger and that's kind of where I want it to be. So that's looking good. So that'll go through the airbrush pretty good and go over the statue. If you, if you make it too thick, it'll turn white and look like this color on the statue. If you go too, too watery, you're just spraying water. So you gotta kind of get that middle gray, which I'm at. So we'll go back to the statue and start painting. Okay, so we're pretty much all set up. Got the paint in the airbrush. Uh, it's gonna be still hard to do with the fingers broken. So I'm just gonna kind of mist out the statue a bit. Uh, I'm gonna mist out the legs and just kind of mist everything and get the interference all over it. So it gives you a better an idea of what happens when it starts hitting different colors next to the other statue that's not going to have it on. So it just gives you an idea and everything. So it works out pretty good I can do this before I strip down the statue. So we'll kick on our uh, piece and then we'll start doing it. Now you don't want to spray uh, too close because you'll start bleeding. And you don't want to spray too far away because it'll start drying before it hits statue. So the typical airbrushing, you know, just kind of
so basically as you saw it didn't really spray too much uh, but there's enough it might be popping in the camera a little bit more looking a little bit wet but that's actually the way it works so I'm gonna hit it with the hair dryer real quick and we'll come back and we'll show them set a side by side so you can get an idea of what happens when you start doing interference colors over the solid colors alright so basically here we go this is a side by side the one on the left's got the interference hit on it and the one on the right is basically your typical uh, factory paint up now as you can kinda of see it's starting to hit the lights a little bit more in the uh, room as you turn it so as we start to turn her we can see that you know you're getting more of a brighter lights going around the parts that are hitting more of a little bit of a sheen going around there whereas when we get to this one it's there but it's just typical you know light hitting it whereas this one back here you're getting more of that sheen and a little bit of a red look going around it like it's almost like a spandex so and you can see uh, basically up around here you're getting hair lights more popping whereas that one you're really not getting that much I mean, you are getting because it it's uh, pretty bright here, and it is hitting the uh, sunlight a little bit more, but you can tell back there that it, the lights are hitting it more, and it's making it pop a little bit. So it's not, it's a subtle change. It's nothing serious. Uh, you know, it depends on how much you want to add to it. You can make it uh, a little bit thicker and pop more, or you can make it less. So that's just simple of adding interference colors to, you know, a factory uh, paint up or adding interference to any kind of paint up you did if you like you know say it's a superman and you want to add a little bit more of a pop to his outfit instead of just flat blues you can add a little interference to it so that's pretty much a little uh, tidbit hopefully it helped you guys out who are getting into airbrushing maybe it, uh you know you want to take an experiment with the statue you got you love the factory and you just want to you know make a little area pop a little bit more so hopefully it helped you guys out thanks for watching and we'll see you next time